Just my, my part, and I'll let these guys that finish the game talk. I, I I wasn't trying to get kicked out. I apologize for doing that. I feel awful for them. I made three three of my three shot free throws on my technical. I obviously woke our guys up, played inspired, and you know, I'm proud of them. Uh, just wish we got over the hump. Got a one point lead there. We had a last shot in one. In, in one. It'd been a great, great win for us. It'd been that next step for us. But, uh, just when I was out there, I think we were really poor in the first half, and I thought that was a big difference in the game. We just didn't play well. And then I thought, well, I was still out there. Miami made some shots to keep the lead at 8 or 10. But after that, I'm proud of my guys, proud of my assistant coaches and, and what they did. So unless you have a quick question for me, I'll get out of here with these guys handle it. Now, what were you doing when you came back in? Were you able to watch the game? On no, the no, I was just now? following it. The guy had radio back there. I was just following it. My, my good friends were texting me, and my wife was texting me, and I was on the phone. They were watching it live, so I, I was able to follow it enough to know what was going on. I know who had fouled out and what was going on. Not, not a lot of fun sitting back there. The second one seemed to come quick. And the first one. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Well, how do you feel after after a game like that? I mean, you guys came back from, from 16 down, but ultimately lost. How are you feeling? For both of you guys, I mean, how did you react to those two quick tees on, on Mark and, and kind of rallied yourselves at that point? Um, everybody was playing inspired. Everybody was trying to win for Coach. Um, he felt it was unfair that he got those technicals and was trying to get the win for him. We knew he couldn't watch the game, so we wanted to go back there and tell him we won the game. That would have been nice. So, um, yeah. I feel the same way. I think we came together as a team right after, you know, the two technical fouls. And, um, you know, Coach Miller did a great job stepping in, and you know, the head coach out there for us at the moment, and you know, he caught some great plays for us. He put us in a position to almost win the game, but you know, we came a little short, and you know, it's not a good feeling getting, you know, having a loss, one another loss on the road. So, you know, we just got to come back and regroup, and you know, move on to the next game. Terrell, what did you see with your shot at the end of the first overtime? We get shot at the end of the first overtime. Um, I mean, I just knew our team needed it. It was down by three. And um, Coach Vanelli had enough confidence to put the play. Um, for me, I made the shot, thank God. I hope so. A little more for the student athletes. Sorry, give them the shower. Uh, for both of you, the full court defense that you guys started playing, did that give you energy and, and kind of spur you onto that? No, it actually sped them up. Man. You know, they got a little. Flushed at the end, and you know we almost got a couple of ten, ten second counts, and you know it, it, it uh, you know it decreased the shot clock at the moment. You know he was taking you know shots at the end with two seconds left, and they hit that one, that one deep three that it really took over you know the game in the second, in the second overtime, and um, you know it was just we were trying to speed them up and get stops and trying to get back in, in the game, and it, you know it happened for us, but you know, like I said, we still came up short. So. Sean, sure, what's your analysis of that last five minutes of the first half? They they closed 14-1 against you guys. What was that? Them making great shots, you guys turning it over. I mean, how did, how did no, you? Us just playing poorly, like Coach said. I'm sorry. Us playing poorly in the first half, the whole first half. You know, you know we didn't play. You know, our basket. We didn't play Maryland basketball. We didn't want to play. So. What were you, you guys' thoughts on uh, Duran Scott? Like, what he did tonight? I don't know. I don't know what he did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I was just so caught up into the game. You know, we knew he was going to drive the basketball. But, um, you know, we, we, we knew he was a good player. You know, we got him fouled out in the first overtime, you know, which gave us, you know, some type of, you know, momentum and, um, you know, I don't know if his stats are anything, so I really good. Terrell, so much happened in this game. When you look back on this 
double over the <coughs> game. Do you think you'll remember how you came from 16 points down, or you just did you lost, or what do you think you'll remember when you look back? I mean, it's something to build on. Um, just continue to talk to the team, tell them that we can play together. If you play together, we can come back. It doesn't matter. Um, and we did it without our head coach, too. So, I mean, it just shows that five guys on the court, we play together, we can come back. No matter what. We're good? Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Questions for Coach Spinner? How did you feel like that ejection galvanized? Yeah, well, I think at halftime, you know, we came in, the was obviously upset at the end and how we finished the half. And, you know, he really kind of lit the guys up. And, you know, he actually talked a little bit about, hey, bring a little bit more energy this half. And I think, you know, when he got thrown out, obviously our team responded quite well. Um, you know, we played with a lot more energy, we played with a lot more purpose. Um, like a lot more fire, and I think our, you know, we kept talking about you know, Coach Turgeon was kept continuously pushing these guys in practice to sustain a longer period of playing uh, a little bit hotter. We played in spurts uh, in the first half, and then the second half when he got thrown out, we really sustained a, to a high level. At least our energy level was there on both ends of the floor. Um, but you know, a lot of it was because the guys really were fired up with Coach Turgeon. You know, I was a substitute teacher, um, you know, just trying to have the lesson plan, and I was just trying to implement what I needed to implement. But, you know, the guys wanted to play for the head coach, and I think that's you know really you know uh, shows a little bit about you know the uh, where our team is heading in the future. But it's a tough loss, and give Miami credit; they stepped up and made plays. Tough loss, though. Do you think that even though you didn't win, that it can be kind of a galvanizing moment for you guys going forward? And any time you know you lose, none of us like to lose. I mean, it's, it's, we all we all lose, but. We're, 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 I think we can build on something at least knowing that you know uh, the head coach is willing to put himself out there, even in front of the game, to get his team fired up to make our guys understand they got to play with a lot more intensity. Um, I, I think we'll be able to build on that. You know, we had some guys really make some pretty heady plays too. We actually we talked a lot about awareness, you know, recognition in this game, and we did it late in the game. I mean, you know, we stepped up to the plate. We had some you know switches that really weren't called from the bench. They were doing it. Some of the stuff, you know, we had talked about with the scouting report that our guys implemented on their own in the second half with the defense away from us. So there's a lot of positives to build on, you know, as far as we're concerned. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, we want to win. Our guys want to win. They work extremely hard in practice to win. Um, so it is disappointing. But, yeah, I think we get to, and, and, you know, looking at our team, and as a roster, you know, you know, we get a lot of young guys. But, you know, uh, you know we want to win on the road. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can be able to build on this you know, moving forward. Scott, did you have a... Was there a, a, a plan for, for how things would you know would, would unfold on the bench if, if, if the head coach were to leave or did he did he you know say anything to you right when he left about what the, you know what to do or you just knew what to think of it? Not right. I mean I've worked with Coach Turner for six years, sure. you know, we've got a great relationship and I, I really know his system, um, what he's trying to get accomplished uh, as a coach, you know, to his team in practice in the game. So it was an easy transition um, based on the fact that we've been together so long. Um, but at the same time, again, I think I was more of a substitute teacher at that time, you know, trying to implement our game plan that we, as a coaching staff, had been prior to the game. Um, obviously, we kind of had to do some different things in terms of pressing, which you know, normally we are a pressing team. Um, but again, our energy level was there at that point, and I think our guys were fired up. They were playing maybe early on a little bit too much emotion, you know, um, and we kind of you know, played with no purpose there for a few minutes, but we, we calmed down. Uh, give our guys credit, they executed very, very well down the stretch to tie it, you know, some of the plays that they ran, set tremendous screens. It wasn't just, you know, Terrell stepped up and made plays, but his teammates stepped up and got them open. Um, so give our guys credit for that. But to answer your question, I think, you know, from you know, being around Coach Jordan for so long, I, uh, uh, I know his system, I know his philosophy, so it was an easy transition there. And, you know, the other coaches were involved also. <coughs> In your um, six years with Turgeon, has this scenario happened before? Honestly, it, it has it almost, almost ha has happened before, <laughs> but uh, it did happen. And I think, you know, um, uh, you know, Coach Turgeon is a fiery competitor, as we sure. all know him to be. And I think, um, you know, he's really trying to instill a toughness with, um, with our team um, as it relates to, to winning on the road. You know, we talked about, you know, you know playing with a little bit more intensity. We know we're not going to get a lot of, uh, you know, calls on the road. We're going to have to overcome some adversity. And uh, I think he was just trying to send a message to our guys that he's a fighter. Uh, he's very passionate about his players, and, and he wants to teach them life lessons through basketball. And at the end of the, you know, I think that's what he was showing our guys. Look, it's, you know, if we're not going to, you know, put forth the effort, then you know, listen, I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice for you guys to hopefully respond and fight it up. So no, it had never happened before, but you know.
know, it was cool. It's been close before. You know, you know the behavior or the, the yeah. pattern that leads. Yeah, to that. yeah. <laughs> we tried to grab him on the second one, you know, and then we after the first one. And, you know, I think he was, um, you know, he was really intense at that point, and uh, you know, we couldn't get to him in time. You don't ever want the head coach to be thrown out of the game. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, but again, it happens, and I think Coach did it. Coach Durkin did it for a great purpose. To be quite honest, he wasn't done because he's a hot hitter or anything like that. He did it to get his team fired up, and he left it with us assistant coaches to you know, try to get our guys rallied, and they rallied to the head coach. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. All right, guys.